I've never covered an effects plugin before on this channel. I've been thinking about a few, but my latest purchase was such a game changer for me that I was compelled to make a video on it. Seventh Heaven is a complex convolution reverb that works like an algorithmic reverb and is a deep sampled recreation of the much loved Bricasti M7 reverb unit. When I say deep sampled, I mean this runs like a sample library but for reverb, having heaps of variations and captured states of the M7's early reflection sounds, late reflection sounds, and special low frequency sounds. These three impulse response sample types work in parallel, modulated intelligently by the plugin to react to incoming sounds the same way the M7 unit, in a real room, would behave. In other words, it's far more advanced than traditional static convolution, which can be found in products like Spaces and Ultiverb, but it's also more advanced than similar Fusion IR reverbs such as Reverberate 2 and Verb Suite Classics. This thing's a specialised monster that provides unequal depth for one particular unit rather than offering hundreds of options from real-world locations and other hardware units. But in doing so, its sound, spatial movement and accuracy is unmatched. Here are some instruments for you to listen to. Now here are the sounds before I added the reverb.
I could go into excessive detail about the differences between Seventh Heaven and other reverbs I've used, but I'm going to focus on the main things that stand out for me. First of all is the ease of placement. When I'm looking for spaces and tweaking controls in Quantum Leap Spaces, SAR1R and Valhalla Room, I spend a lot of time getting what I want. It's not often I'll get my instrument into the space I want naturally with just one instance of these three reverbs. I mostly have to dial in an early reflection sound I want, then pull in a second instance with a late reflection or tail I want. I have to carefully tweak these two reverb settings for every instrument I'm using. What I'm basically doing is trying to set my instruments in a space while trying to avoid any adverse effects the reverb might have like bloating, slapping, or giving off a kind of plastic wrapping around my instrument. This commonly involves running an EQ after and sometimes also before the reverb instances to tame the sound. And that's how I've been working for years. I've always used reverb sparingly because of this, because my reverbs could potentially ruin my sound if I didn't micromanage them and constantly lower the reverb send until it was only just noticeable. After putting 7th Heaven on a few of my instruments for the first time, it felt like everything I was used to doing with my other reverbs just melted away. Within a couple of seconds, I was so close to what I wanted to hear already, I was in disbelief. The instrument sounded perfectly placed, which was always a fiddly thing to get with my other reverbs. It's like the plugin did half an hour's tweaking for me instantly. I'll use sound to explain it. Here's my other three go-to reverbs using similar settings. I've loaded up Quantum Leap Spaces with a 1.8 second room, a low cut at 200Hz, high cut at 11Hz, and a pre-delay of just 5 milliseconds. I've matched this with SAR1R and Valhalla Room to get similar reverb sounds. Here's Spaces. A realistic convolution space, but it can sound a little stiff and polished at times. Now for the algorithmic variant with SAR1R. Sounds good. Slightly more colourful than spaces, but it still sounds far from perfect. Now Valhalla Room. It's smooth but still kind of layered on top of the instrument. Now I'll pull in the same settings using 7th Heaven sound. Totally natural and lifelike. In order to get anywhere close to this sound with the other three reverbs, I'd have to spend some serious time brainstorming. This example may not convince you entirely, but the next, I feel, is a checkmate. Percussion is the bane of my reverb plugins. I'm going to run some percussion through the same settings I just used.
they get slaps, womps, and muddy mitts. Now seventh heaven. Absolutely stunning. All of the headaches the other reverbs gave me with percussion just disappeared. This, for me, is the game changer. The most amazing thing about 7th Heaven in this context, though, is the very low frequency signal. I'm going to reduce the low cut filter to 40 Hz on these reverbs and send some low drums through each reverb. Seventh Heaven handles it immensely better, but adding the very low frequency signal in will boost the low frequency content of the instrument in a way that I never thought was possible with a reverb plugin. Absolutely insane. Finally, what impresses me about 7th Heaven's workflow is its tenacious consistency of sound while you tweak settings. Normally with SAR1R and Valhalla Room, I have to be careful with how I tweak settings because the sound can change somewhat drastically and in directions that make it hard to keep a firm grip on my desired sound and where I'm taking it. When I'm changing the reverb length, filters and reflection balance in 7th Heaven, the sound steadily changes incrementally, but keeps focused on the incoming audio from the instrument, so it'll never betray me or enter a zone where the sound starts to get bad or weird. The IRs and engine at work here is constantly reacting to your instruments in a way that could only be described as a tailor fit. After hearing what 7th Heaven was capable of on a handful of my libraries, I wanted to see if I could throw something at it that would make it sound bad. I excitedly started combing through all of my favourite libraries one by one, anxious to hear how they each sounded in this reverb.
I can't say I've ever felt compelled to do that with any other reverb. Everything sounded good, from bone dry to room wax. I could dial in a gorgeous sound within a minute. At about the fifth hour of doing this, I thought, well, this thing can't give me Teldex or Air Lindhurst or the Taj Mahal, but I want my instruments in seventh heaven space now. I'll switch out chamber strings tree mics for the close mics and sit them in the Boston Hall preset rather than hear them in Air Lindhurst. understand why some choose to use the Bricasti M7, or 7th Heaven, exclusively. It's hard not to. I would like to keep Sar1R on the side for its unique, almost metallic-like tone, but 7th Heaven will handle my day-to-day -day duties. And the coolest part about all this? You'll notice I'm not even using the $300 Pro version of 7th Heaven, just the $69 standard version. That's the coolest part. Spending the extra bucks for the Pro version will give you a lot more presets and impulse response samples to choose from, more control over how the early and late reflections behave, and a 5-band post-EQ so you can shake the reverb sound to perfection for a particular sound. I will be getting the Pro version because I do like to add that extra touch for certain instruments, but it's certainly not a necessary purchase. We live in a world where one of the greatest and what I personally consider to be the greatest reverb plugins ever made will run you 70 bucks. If you're an avid reverb buff, buy this plugin. If you don't use reverb that much, buy this plugin. If you don't have this plugin, there's no excuse not to have it. I know some people get stuffy about eye locks, but honestly, an eye lock is one of the first things a composer should get because a lot of products use it and it's better to have one than to not have one. Get this reverb. And that's that. If you like these videos, you can support the channel on Patreon and get sent monthly rant videos, or buy an album at Bandcamp for dirt cheap. I'll see you next time with some libraries. Check you later.